Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a look at the second calculation in our state matrix equation. This is an update equation. We're trying to update the current state with information from the previous state, multiply times a, and we did that in the previous video, and we have that result right here. And now we're going to add the second term right here when we multiply the B matrix times U. Remember, U is the control variable matrix, which typically represents the acceleration in, uh, of the object. So here we have the three examples, the rising fluid, falling object, and the moving object. Both the rising fluid and the falling object are motions in the y direction. We're assuming that the moving object is moving in the x direction. So the state variables, x in this case will represent the, the position in the y direction and the velocity in the y direction, the position in the y direction and the velocity in the y direction for both the rising fluid and the falling object. And for the moving object, assuming it's in the x-direction, the position in the x-direction, and the velocity in the x-direction. Notice now that the B matrix is equal to a 2 by 1 matrix, where the top element is 1 half times delta T squared, and the bottom element is delta T. Notice that it is in line with the kinematics equation, where we have the velocity multiplied times T, and here we have the acceleration multiplied by 1 half T squared. That's where the B matrix comes from. The U matrix, in this case, remember the U matrix is the control variable matrix. In the case of a, the fluid rising in a tank at a constant velocity, there is no acceleration, so the U, the U matrix is equal to zero. In the case of a falling object, the U matrix is equal to G because there it's subjected to the acceleration due to gravity. And the moving object in the x direction, if it has an acceleration, we just express it in terms of A. It may or may not have an acceleration. Assuming it does, the U matrix is A. Now we're going to multiply a 2 by 1 matrix times a 1 by 1 matrix. Here we can see a 2 by 1 times a 1 by 1. If the two middle numbers are equal, we can indeed do the multiplication, and the result will give us a 2 by 1 matrix. In the case of this calculation, we multiply this times 0, we get 0. This times 0, we get 0. B times U is a 0, 0 matrix in this case. In other words, since there's no acceleration, there will be no update to the A times X calculation. The A times, the A times X calculation simply gives us the update to the position, and it will maintain the same velocity since there's no acceleration. In the case of this matrix, where we have a falling object, we can see that the acceleration will have an additional factor we need to add into the position and for the velocity. On the bottom element right here, you can see that g, which is acceleration due to gravity, times the, the elapsed time delta t from one frame to the next frame or from one observation to the next observation. This will now be added to the velocity. The velocity was y dot. We now add to that the acceleration times the time elapsed. So now we can see that if we add this to this, we get the new velocity of the new state. If we then add 1 half g times delta t squared, which is additional change in the position caused by the acceleration, if we add that to the y plus delta t times y dot, which is the velocity in the y direction, then we can see that, that the position, maybe if I write this in y's, that would make sense if I change all these to y's in the vertical direction, you can then see that the new position will be equal to the old position plus the change caused by the velocity plus the change caused by the acceleration. That then becomes apparent that we multiply a times x. We get the change in position due to the velocity. And when we multiply b times u, we get the change in position due to the acceleration. When we add the two together, we then get the total change for the new state in position and velocity by adding these two multiplications together, we get the new position and we get the new velocity as a result of the effect by the velocity and the effect by the acceleration. Regardless if it's in the y direction or the x direction, the methodology is exactly the same and this is a good example for a one-dimensional motion. And to offset this so you can see that if there's no acceleration, this term simply goes to zero and the new matrix, the new what we call a state matrix is updated simply by this only and this goes to zero if there's no acceleration. If there's acceleration, you need this plus this to give you the new state. A simple example in one dimension makes it clear.
Now you may say, how do we do this in two dimensions? Well, we'll get to that in the next videos. Hopefully this will give you a good understanding of how you update the state matrix and how you, have to how you find the A matrix and the B matrix for one dimensional motion. It's clear, of course, that if we then do two dimensions or three dimensions, the A and the B matrix will look quite a bit different and we'll get to that as well. We haven't, we haven't tackled this one yet. We're going to leave this one till later because that just muddles up the water, so to speak. We first want to get a full understanding of how to do this. We can very easily do a Kalman gain without the additional noise. If we want to improve things, we add the noise to that and we'll show that later as well. Hopefully at this point you begin to see, wow, I think I know how to update the state matrix, at least when it's a one-dimensional problem, with acceleration or without acceleration. In the next videos, we'll show you two-dimensional and even three-dimensional problems and how to adapt the A matrix and the B matrix so we can update the state matrix. That's how it's done.